when I moved, when I moved down to um, uh, to Los Angeles, it was from uh, Seattle, and I moved down because I had a son, and I had to get I had to get some work, and I the only credit I had was off of Northern Exposure playing a really nerd character, like this uh, the son of a really amazing preacher who was trying to be a preacher himself but could, couldn't do it. He just sucked because he was nervous in front of people, you know. Uh, so I was getting called in for a lot of nerds because in Hollywood, whatever you've done before is what you keep doing. And then suddenly I get an audition for this other kind of character, this spy character, and I'm like, right on. And apparently they, they've been looking for somebody for like three months and hadn't found anybody they liked and they were filming in three days and the character was supposed to die after five episodes anyway, so they, were just, they just had to get it done. And I came in with a believable accent and they were like, done killing <laughs> I just I just auditioned for it, um, and I think Joss wanted someone very um, silk-like, very thin and, and tiny, and I came in, and he's like, no, but Barney Knox was like, yes, and uh, and so uh, they called me to come back, and I had actually left town, so I couldn't go back, so they're like, we're going to see more people, and if we don't find somebody, come back on Monday, so I went in on Monday, didn't find anybody, and, uh, and uh, Marty pushed for me, that's how I got the job. Uh, yeah, I auditioned uh, late in the process of trying to find the master because they couldn't figure out who they wanted and the casting director told me later that they actually brought me in because she was sure that I was wrong. <laughs> because they'll often do that, casting directors, apparently they bring in people that they're sure are wrong, hoping the director will help them understand better what, they, what the director wants because the director will say, no, no, no. But it turned out I was what just when we shared a sense of irony and and we realized that it was all supposed to be very funny. <laughs> That's it. Well, I think you all did a great job. I enjoyed your work. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say welcome. Um, enjoy the show. What was your guys' most memorable moments on the set? My most memorable was when my dress broke and fell down. <laughs> I was filming a fight sequence. I think it was a lot of people's most memorable. <laughs> and it's on film somewhere. Yeah, I think three cameras. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a couple. Uh, the hardest part about for me about all the makeup, which took five hours to put on, was the nails. Because once I had the nails on, I couldn't really do anything. And they were long days, and I wanted to keep hydrated, so I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I had to go find a volunteer, a PA, or a costume assistant, somebody, and I, and I, I had some good time. <laughs> but I can't name any names. Did you ever hurt yourself before you figured out that you needed an assistant? Oh yeah. Yeah, but there aren't any scars. Uh, uh, I I uh, I will always remember the guy that played the stunt spike was a guy named Steve Tartaglia. And he um he was a maniac. He came from Hong Kong. And he was a he was a, a the one of the main Caucasian stuntmen in Hong Kong. And in Hong Kong, they don't have a lot of like laws around stunts, so a lot of things that you can get away with in Hong Kong are illegal here. So no matter what they asked of Steve, he was like, ah, piece of cake. That's huge. <laughs> so I just I will always remember him. He had to take a third story fall onto uh, concrete, but onto just because of the can't. Onto, all he had for a pad was a bush about this big, right? And it was on concrete. And at the last minute, because of camera angle, he had to take the fall on the curb. Like, he had to fall on the curb with only a bush. He had to curb himself. And I just always remember him doing the gag and getting up like, okay, that's nice. <laughs> I he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, most memorable moment on set. Um, there were so many. Um, <laughs> I, so yeah, no, it was just it was it was a fun set. There was a lot of awesomeness. Um, I guess uh, for me, just embarrassing myself. Um, I walked into a pole in the musical episode. 
Yeah, and I thought I thought I got away with it because no one said anything, but I guess somebody <laughs> was filming it. And um, yeah, you can watch the episode. And I walk right into the pool. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> Any memorable moments from the? I did the same thing in the musical. <laughs> From the, the movie set, any memorable moments? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there are. Uh, <laughs> PG 13. Um, we, the movie was uh, a lot of night shooting. I mean, the whole thing was pretty much night shooting, so it was a grueling, really grueling schedule. And um, about three quarters of the way through the filming of the movie, um, our dolly grip got these <coughs> pins made, like, you know, just like a circle pin that you put on your t-shirt, and it said, uh, Buffy to just say no. <laughs> uh, that really upset the director. She got up and she said, cut the lights. <laughs> we were down for like two hours, so she was really upset. But we never did make another one, so it's true. But I'll never forget that day. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I remember one of the commentaries, Josh said that there are two people he wants to take a prat ball. It's uh, James and Alexis Denisov. And um, I was just wondering for all of you, sort of the way in the movie and the um, show, you do a lot of heavy drama and comedy, like bounce back and forth. And that's something that you enjoy doing as actors. And that's sort of how that works and sort of the way that, that you come to set and, and prepare. That's a really good question. Yeah, I, that was one of the things that I really enjoyed about Buffy the most was that we used switched up styles so quickly. You know, we did horror, we did melodrama, comedy, I, kind of everything. Uh, and in the beginning, it was episode to episode would be different styles. And then by the end, it would switch up kind of, almost sometimes mid-scene, you'd, you'd switch it up. And we'd be like, what, what styles? <laughs> uh, but uh, it was like, it was great, it was just great training because I was coming from stage and I knew how to do all those styles on stage, but then how do you translate those on the film? Because film really wants naturalism. That's, everyone accepts that most acting for film is naturalism. And when you go outside of that, you start, it's very easy to look fake. And so it's the, the, the challenge is to do the different styles but still be believable. And, and I remember, I acted way too much in the beginning. I remember Josh came up to me and he goes, he goes, can we have a little, uh, more Tim Roth, a little less Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> so I was always trying to kind of and to subtle it up, you know. And every time the, the style would change, I'd have to remind myself of that. Yeah. Mark. What was the question? What was the question? I was just wondering in terms of because y'all have got a chance to do both comedy and drama on the show and in the film, sort of how, as an actor, if you enjoy doing that, and what kind of process you went through to get to go from one to the other so quickly a lot of the time, I guess. Yeah, I, 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 I honestly don't understand the question because to me, it's all the same. I mean, it's all funny. <laughs> um, I don't understand all this sadness. No, I know, I understand, but it's not, a, it's not a changing from one to the other. It's all uh, a, about bringing a reality and a sense of, of life, of, of, of a living creature to the medium, whatever the medium is, whether it's stage or film. And you do have to be, or television, you do have to be a little bit smaller on film, but we're playing the master, which was very, a lot of fun, with this mask on, the mask is a mask is very liberating. You study mask when you do take uh, when you study drama in college, and you find when you put a mask on, it's very liberating because you're not who you are, and you have this mask on. So it was very it was a lot of fun to play with this, and also I got to do a little Sylvia Sidney from Sunset Boulevard, and I got to do a little uh, uh, what's his name Shank from Nosferatu. I got to bring lots of 
bits and pieces of my history with film to it, so it can, yeah. Was that the question? Yeah. <laughs> it was close, it was close, Mark. It was close. Um, no, I think one thing, um, this may or may not answer your question, I don't know, but one thing about Joss's writing that you guys all appreciate, and we appreciate as actors, is no matter the, you know, seriousness of the situation that the characters are going through, there is a certain lightness to his, to his, you know, deliveries and a certain cadence that he has, and so I think that with that language, it's easier to transition through the emotions um, because he always his writing carries this certain lightness to it. Right. Yeah, that's. I mean, it, the style, whether it's drama, comedy, or whatever, it's all was coming through Joss in some way, and he has this voice that is exactly there's a lightness to it, and there's an elevation to it, which is great fun to play. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a stab at it? No, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.